Today we're going to learn to repair a compact inch product. This happens to be a 158 bore, single rod end. It's a non-magnetic piston. So what you'll need is you'll need your, your cylinder, your seals out of your repair kit, spanner wrench, pick for your seals, possibly a hammer, and of course your lube from a repair kit, and a rag, and a vise. So we'll place the cylinder in the vise for our, our rear end up. Take your spanner wrench, put it in your wire notches on your end cap, your wire holes right here, turn it clockwise. One full turn, so the wire comes out the side, you press your end cap in slightly, about an eighth of an inch. Pull your wire back through the wire hole and place it aside on your table. Press the rear, push on the rod in. Press the end cap up so you can get it out. Place it on your work table. Push your piston rod back in the cylinder. Rotate it so the rod end is up. Again, take your spanner wrench in your wire notches. Rotate your end cap. One full turn clockwise. Press your end cap in. Pull your retaining wire back out. Pull the piston shaft assembly and end cap out. You can take the end cap off, lay it to the side. You have your piston shaft assembly. At this point, you want to remove any seals with your pick. So we'll remove the piston seal. We'll remove the end cap seal from the rear end cap. End cap seal from the shaft end cap. And the rod seal. Then you'll take your rag and you will wipe any Debris, excess grease, dirt from all the grooves. This happens to be a clean cylinder, so it's not too bad. But you would want to clean all your debris, any grease from the grooves on the shaft. And of course, from the cylinder board. And once you've done that, you want to check your cylinder board for scratches, gouges, make sure that it is still in good shape. You want to check your piston rod to make sure there are no gouges on it that can cut a seal, and check your rod barrier. Those are the major things to check. And once you have your seals out, your repair kit is going to come with several different seals. Based on the age of the cylinder, we do include some of the older seals and an older bearing. We include a magnet if, you're, if your cylinder is a mag cylinder, so you would have a separate groove for a magnet you would need to change out. So you match your seals up, which I've already done here. Your two end cap seals, they match the old ones. Your piston seal matches the one I pulled out. If your cylinder happened to be extremely old and have O-rings instead of a figure eight type seal, and then of course your U-cut rod seal. So we will take some to clean this. You'll get a little packet of RK lube, which is our repair kit lube. Put some in each one of the grooves. Just one small amount of grease. You take your new seal. Make 
Put it in the groove. A little more grease. Put it on the outside of the seal. Just keep it. Helps keep it from getting nicked. And as we do, we put our end cap seals on. Just roll them in the outer groove. Same thing for the shaft end cap. You're still around into that groove. And then your U-cup seal. U-cup seal, the open portion of the seal goes toward the inside of the cylinder. Push it in the groove, work it in the groove. On the smaller cylinders, you may have to use a pick or something else. The easiest way to do these before you put them together is take your piston rod and put it in through the cylinder backwards. What this does is this seats that U-cup seal so that it doesn't catch on the wrench flats as likely. And then you can, usually they'll go through pretty good. Sometimes you gotta work with them a little bit. You've got your piston shaft assembly, your rear end cap stone, and your cylinder. So we're gonna assemble it in reverse order. So we start with the front of your cylinder or top of your cylinder. This one happens to be a thread's rear cylinder. So the taps are on the rear. And the way we determine front and rear is if your rod end is up, your ports would be on the right hand side of that face. So since this one's thread rear, we're going to rotate it. So this is going to be our rod end opposite our ports. Put it back in the vise. Piston shaft assembly, just like we took it out. Line it up with your wire hole, the wire notch. Wire notch with your wire hole. Gently push it down in there nice and easy so you don't cut the seals. Push it just past that groove. Take your retaining wire. Put it through the hole just like you took it out. And as you see, the hook on the wire lines up with the wire notch. Push your end cap back flush with the end of the cylinder. Take your spanner wrench. Rotate your end, clap, end cap one turn counterclockwise till the wire is all the way in the cylinder. Rotate your cylinder to the rear. If you'll push your piston up, It'll be a little easier to get your rear end cap. Again, we're going to line the wire notch up with our wire groove. The rear end cap's a little harder to get pressed in straight because you don't have the piston rod guiding it. Push it in. Insert your retaining wire in reverse just like you took it out. Your hook lines up with the wire notch. Press on the piston rod, bring that back flush. Take your spanner wrench in the wire notches, rotate counterclockwise until the wire is inside the cylinder. Now you have reassembled your cylinder and you would need to leak test it to be sure that it operates. You put it under like 40 PSI, make sure it operates smoothly and put it back in your leak test if you want to bubble test it or pressure decay, whatever, whatever you need to leak test to make sure it operates good.